guys again. Time to move on towards um, towards the fifth chapter under our our advanced trading strategies and concepts. And from this moment on, uh, we are still having four chapters out of this out of this uh, this journey. I'm I'm trying to to show you here. So uh, we will still have chapter number five, six, seven, and eight. But from this moment of time, from this moment of time, things start to get a little bit more complicated. Not that impossible to understand, but let's say we will try to approximate uh, uh, a little bit some more, some more complex, uh, complex terms. Now this chapter is being called calculating market price objectives using the RSE, you know the RSI, the Relative Strength Index and Fibonacci. Mainly we will use the RSE and this chapter's purpose is to take this, this oscillator and to show you a nice and effective method of how to calculate price objectives based on, uh, based on this oscillator. It will have, uh, this chapter it will have many uh, different recordings, they will be labeled part 1, part 2, part 3 and so on and so forth. I don't know exactly how many recordings are going to be, but uh, until the work is done I will, uh, I will just keep, uh, keep recording them. After, um, um, after, after the first or, or, or the, two, uh, the first two recordings, um, when you will see the relative strength index, how we will divide it, the standard interpretation and the how should we divide it in order to, uh, to, uh, to use it for, for the sake of our, of our analysis in here. Then, uh, then we will move on and we will see how to, um, how to identify a positive and a, and a negative reversal um, and then how to calculate the, the price objective based on, on, uh, on all the information that you will see on this, uh, on this recording. Now, relative strength index, as you very well know, it is more than a, moment of, uh, than a momentum oscillator and its standard interpretation is that higher values than 17 are considered to be overbought and lower values than 30 are considered to be oversold. If you click on insert and indicators and under the oscillator tab you have here the relative strength index. So this is our, this is our relative strength index. You see the implied levels are 30 and 70. We will leave them as there is as they are like this and the, uh, the default and standard period is, is 14 we will leave it like this and this is this is how the relative strength index oscillator appears on any on any broker on, on any on any default platform platform that uh, that goes on the under the meta meta trader approach so 17 is being considered overbought uh, 30 is being considered oversold this is the standard interpretation and the negative or a positive of or a positive reversal is a, is a so-called divergence, but the divergence so the divergence the divergence that the price made made in comparison with the RSE, but the divergence is not going to be is not going to be from price extremes. For example, let me let me give you an example. See here, this is a divergence, meaning that the RSE, the relative strength index here makes, makes um, uh, let's say, a new, a, a lower low, sorry, a higher low in here, compared with the price, so the price makes a lower low. So this is a divergence, but this is not, this is not the kind of divergence I am uh, I'm trying to tell you. We are going to look at positive and negative, uh, and negative reversals, a sort of diversion, the difference being that this type of diversion does not appear at the top or the bottom, but sometimes it appears right in the middle, right in the middle of, uh, of a trend. But when they come, uh, this, this sort of, of, uh, of reversal um, um, will give us an idea about the price projection based on the current information of the market that the market is giving us. Now this price projection should be viewed like the measurement for the continuation patterns. They, uh, they can be viewed in the sense uh, of, uh, of resembling the, I don't know, the measure move for the typical continuation pattern like, like a contracting triangle or a bull flag or a pant. So they are not mandatory. The final objective, uh, the forecast that we are going to make, they are not ma mandatory, the prices. But if you want to be on the safe side, 
just project them forward and look for 61, I don't know, 61.8 or 75 percent out of the moon, and that should be your, your targeted price. Before before moving into the LSC, into the LSC, for those of you who want to to get even more information on on the subject with even more details, then I strongly recommend the Constance Brown's book, Technical Analysis for the Trading Professional, or Grow Hill, 1999. It is an amazing book. And you will see it. Uh, you will see that it helps uh, quite a lot. Now, now let me let me delete the objects here and start this and start this chapter after the short introduction. So this is the this is the relative strength index, uh, like it is provided by by any broker, the standard default. But if you take the indicator list, we will click edit on it, and I would like to edit it. So let's say leave the color as it is, but I would like to add some levels. And we will have the 65 level, and we will add the 40. Level. And there you go. This is your uh, this is the relative strength index as being uh, as being modified. Now let's. Let's delete a 30 level from here. So what we're having now, we're having, we're having a 65 and a 40. So um, we are giving up by the levels given by, by the broker, so the 17 and the 30, but we will play with, with the 65 and 40. Why? The 65 and 40 normally should be interpreted under this approach. They should be interpreted as, uh, as a bull and bear market uh, when you have a bull or and or a bear market that is trending, then this is uh, the resistance for the trending market, and then uh, the um, um, the support for for the trending market. Here, this is this is for example a 65 a 65 level for the for the one hour for the hourly chart from the relative strength index, and in this case, as you see, it is a bear market resistance. So this should be here. Noted that this is bear market resistance, bear market range. Sorry, so the bear market range should be below this line. So this whole, this whole line, this whole shape is the bear market range. Under this approach, and also under this approach, of course, that the that everything that is everything that is above everything that is above the 40 line this should be called this should be called a bull market range now you might ask what's what's with this subdivision why are we doing this well we are just preparing we are just preparing the field for uh, for moving forward but <clears throat> if you take a look at how price how price reacts, and not only the price, but if you take a look at the at the oscillator, by the time the 40 level it is being it is being regained, see, in here it is below the 40, in a bear market range, still in a bear market range, but then all of a sudden the rel relative strength index manages to gather to get a strength, and uh, the 40 level not being able to be broken, it is not broken anymore to the downside, and we just we bounce and uh, and out of the bear market range, we break the 70, we, we break the 65 level to the upside, and basically from that moment on, we are entering in a bull market range. So you can divide your your markets based on based on on how the uh, the oscillator travels, um, quite uh, quite easy. Now this is uh, this is the end of the first part. I just gave you a short introduction and. Uh, and divided the, the relative strength index and we will move forward on with the second recording right uh, straight away.